Hey folks, thanks for joining me. In this episode, I'm going to talk about Corpus and how to use it to fatten up your baseline material. Let's have a listen to this project and see what's going on. Then I've been working on some weird dubstep breakdown here. So if you're like me, then you use multiple instruments to create your bass lines. And one way in the long process of gluing your sounds together, so they sound like they fit, is to use corpus. Now, corpus is a physical modeling effect that creates an acoustic reflection of these various properties. We have beam, marimba, string, membrane, plate, pipe, and tube. So in essence, corpus is a resonator, and it takes whatever material you send through it and it resonates that audio as if it were being reflected off one of those various items in the list. Don't think of reflection as in a reverb or anything like that, as this is much different. So those are the resonance types. The next list over is the resonance quality. Essentially, it controls the trade-off between the sound quality and the performance of your CPU. The ratio is the 3D modeling amount that adjusts the membrane, as they call it, of the resonance type. In layman's terms, it adjusts the size of the reflected surface. The decay is one you should all know. Basically, it's the length the sound will play out for. The material adjusts how low or high frequencies will decay over time. The lower the value, the more the low frequencies will last while the higher frequencies die off. And vice versa. Listening L or left adjusts the location on the left resonator where the vibrations are measured. Same thing for listening R or right. Hit sets the location of the resonator at which the resonator is activated at. Width adjusts the stereo ratio between the left and right resonators. Bleed mixes a portion of the unprocessed signal with the processed resonating signal. The higher the value, the more the original material will come through. Gain, well, is pretty self-explanatory, as is the dry-wet function. If you don't know those, why the <coughs> are you even watching my video then? This is too advanced for you. So go back and learn your sh**. <coughs> Uh, the filter is a bandpass filter and it adjusts the frequencies being resonated and again this is something you should already know. On the other side here is the brightness. It's like the name, it adjusts the brightness of the overall sound. The higher you set it, the more amplitude or gain is processed to the higher frequencies. And the opposite is true if you turn it down for the low frequencies. The inharmonics control adjusts the amount of harmonics, also known as the frequencies it produces into the original sound. Now those harmonics or frequencies it magically adds is from the resonators that are reflecting off of your sound of whatever material you have chosen in the list. Over here is the tuning portion of Corpus. You can tune your resonators to match the key notes of whatever sounds you are putting through here. The fine is a fine tuning function to adjust the pitch of the resonators even more. Then down here the spread function will detune the resonators equally from each other depending on which way you go. Over here the LFO or low frequency oscillator is a way to kind of automate the intensity of the Corpus effect. LFOs are another thing that you should be familiar with. If not, we can always make another Fat Sessions video if you like. Please make suggestions for other Ableton topics and I will make a video for it. Please leave your ideas in the comments below. So, how do I use Corpus? Well, that's a good question because I really don't know myself. I just use what I know about the program coupled with what I hear and that's what you get. So in this instance, and for many other instances, I've found that string and membrane sound the best. 
So for this track, strings sounded the best to me, and I've selected full for getting the best sound quality. Now the important part of Corpus, especially for your bassline material, is setting the tuning properly. Now I know what the root note of my track is, and that's D. So I've brought the tuning all the way down to D1. The decay I have brought all the way down to the bottom, and the material I've offset to about minus 28. I've brought up a little bit of listening L and left listening R all the way down. I've brought hit to just over halfway. I've brought the brightness up quite a bit, and I've turned down some of the inharmonics. The filter is very important to set. Of course, you want to focus on the lower frequencies, so that's what I've done here. I've set it all the way down to the bottom at 50 Hz, and I've made a moderate bell curve at 3.33. Of course, I've left the width down and the bleed down. I've brought some of the gain up a little bit, and to make this a very subtle effect, I've only left it at 8.6%, because you really don't want to bring it up much more, otherwise you're going to drown out your entire track and just make it sound like mud. So let's have a bit of an A-B comparison to uh, Corpus On and Corpus Off for the baseline material. So that is Corpus. Um, you can pretty much use these exact settings for your track, just adjust the tuning, and you should have a pretty fat bass line. Next to the Corpus, I've also used PSP Vintage Warmer to add a little bit more saturation and to use the compressor built in to kind of just level everything out. I've also used a little bit of EQ to tame some frequencies and a sidechain compressor. Well, folks, that pretty much wraps it up. If you have any ideas for future videos, please leave your ideas in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Have a great day.